Hey guys, I think we're in the home stretch on this set. Next thing I want to do is make sure that I've got the absolute best magnet on the neck of the CRT. I've read in several service manuals that you always want to position this so you get the absolute brightest picture. Regardless of whether it might be off center a little bit or out of focus a little bit, you've got to position that so you get the brightest picture. And make sure you use the right magnet strength to get the brightest picture. If it's out of focus, off center, whatnot, you fix that by adjusting this gizmo here, which is attached to the focus coil, or you can slide this whole assembly back and forth. That's the yoke and focus magnet. And of course, there's a focus control. So I already played around with a couple different magnets. The first one was a failure. The second one seems pretty good, but I want to make sure that it's the best I've got. So I went uh, to my box of spare parts and pulled out every single pole ion trap magnet I've got. And I'm going to slap on a few of these and see if we can get the picture to be any brighter. I found a magnet that seems to be working quite well, so now I'm moving on to the IF strip. This set, like the last few Admiral chassis I've worked on, has a lot of out of tolerance resistors in the IF strip. Especially the resistors used on the cathodes. Like that 47 ohm resistor, 68 in 150. So I've been replacing those and any others I find along the way that are out of tolerance and you can see all the new ones are those blue guys and metal film resistors. As soon as that's done I want to do a quick alignment on it because if you start mucking around down in here it's a really good idea to redo the, uh, the alignment. And in this chassis they actually make that a little bit easier for you because now there's this four pin socket up here which gives you easy access to all the key points. In my previous alignment videos you see me poking around under here and clipping in leads and so on. Well now you can just flip the chassis down and plug your meters and, and whatnot right into these banana jacks right on top of the chassis. Here's an example of one of those bad resistors. Yellow, violet, black. That's 47 ohms. What does it measure? 109.5. So I definitely pulled that one out and replaced it. Likewise, every other one I've found in that cathode circuit has been off by at least 50%. So I've replaced all of them. Here's the IF response curve I'm getting with the marker set at 24.3 which is supposed to be right in between the two bumps and it pretty much is but obviously the bumps are not of equal height so I will go through and tweak this a bit. It's exactly the same procedure that I used in my 20X11 restoration series so if you want to see a really in-depth video on how to do alignments please watch my Admiral 20X11 restoration videos. Here's the IF response post alignment. The two peaks are of equal height and I've got my scope set up so that each square represents one megahertz of bandwidth. So with the 50% point we've got one, two, three point two megahertz bandwidth just like we should. Thank you. 
I think I'm just about done tweaking this set. The uh, last thing I want to do is, it's a bit of a shadow in the upper right corner, and uh, the screen is just barely at the right edge there. In other words, the whole thing is kind of shifted over to the left more than I'd like it to be. So I've been playing around with this centering control. It's also down a bit from the top. So if I get it all the way over good to the right, there's a gap at the top, and if I get it all the way nice up at the top, then there's a shadow on the right hand side, so I've been fighting with that. There are quite a few adjustments, and I think what I'm going to have to do is go a little bit further and actually slide this whole thing. I'll try to get a little bit forward a little bit further. What I've been playing around with is this lever goes back and forth and up and down a little bit, but there's only so much you can do with that. If things aren't quite right, and there's a bunch of other adjustments. You can loosen up this screw and the one on the other side. You can move the whole assembly up and down a little bit. Uh, you can, or I should say the, the uh, inner coil here, while this stays stationary. And if that doesn't do it, then you can loosen up these bolts and the two on the other side and slide this whole thing back and forth. Here's a look from the back directly down the neck of the pitcher tube. And here's where I've been making some of these adjustments. This big thing here is the focus coil. It's a big electromagnet. A couple wires coming down here. It also serves duty as a filter choke and a power supply. You want to get it centered so that it doesn't touch the neck anywhere around. That's what these are for. You can loosen both of these screws up. Then you can slide it back and forth and up and down a little bit. Which I just did so now it's dead center. And this is the centering control. It's got a pivot point down here and one up here. I loosen this up and now you can go left and right which moves a piece of metal inside there which has a subtle effect on the electromagnet and will kind of skew the electron beam left right up down so you can move this left and right and you can also move it up and down a little bit don't want to do it too hard you hear that little clink that's that metal actually hitting the neck of the pitcher too. So you don't want to like whack this over or you could shatter this. Now we need to move it a little bit and it has a significant effect on the pitcher. And here is where the ion trap goes on. Something like this. And then what I'm always doing when I'm reaching back here is I'm moving this like this and back and forth to find a sweet spot you always want to adjust this for the maximum brightness in the picture tube and often there's two spots where you get a bright picture like maybe around here but also up here you always want to use the one that's closest to the base to get the uh, best picture the brightest picture and they claim in the service manual that if you don't get this quite right you can actually damage or shorten the life of the pitcher tube. Not entirely sure that's true, but they say it's important, so I'll go with it. I mean, it's certainly important to get the brightest pitcher, but I wasn't aware they could actually damage anything. So this really just bends some electrons uh, so that they go straight instead of kind of towards the side. But uh, at any rate, I will uh, button this back up and power this set up. And let's see if all this fiddling actually accomplished anything. <laughs> now, unfortunately, there's still some evidence of faint vertical lines here, but I do have the picture filling up the whole screen nicely now, no shadow in the corner or anything. But I did just find one other little problem. I've been catching whiffs of ozone. So I popped the cover off the high voltage cage and my camera's probably not going to pick it up, but 
down in the bowels of that high voltage cage, you can see a little pinpoint of blue white light. So a little bit of corona. I'm not entirely sure where it is though. Probably around the base of that high voltage rectifier. So I'm gonna have to pop this cage off and see if I can figure out where it's coming from. And then either just clean up whatever's causing the short or I can paint a little super corona dope on it, which is a high voltage sealant. And that might get rid of those lines. They might very well be coming from uh, some of that arcing. I also think that's where that high pitch squealing that occasionally comes through the audio is coming from. I think it's coming from that arcing inside here. I removed the high voltage cage and powered this set up and started hunting around for the source of that ozone. And I think I found it. I don't know if my camera is going to be able to pick it up. Probably not, but around the base of this rectifier, there are some really faint dots of blue and little streamers coming out. I think that's just from a lot of accumulated dust. I think that capacitor is actually light tan <laughs> and it's gone black from all the accumulated dust. There's a lot of static electricity that builds up here and it just, over the years, attracts all these really fine particles of dirt. And I think that's just built up around there. So I'm going to clean all that off and see if that takes care of the problem. This also gives me a chance to try out this high voltage probe a friend dropped off yesterday. It's a Pomona just like the one I've been using, although it's a slightly older model. The problem with mine is that it seems to be off by about 30%. It's reading uh, to a lower voltage than it should and I don't see any obvious way to calibrate it. It could be that the resistors inside here have drifted off a of value and uh, like it, it's more practical to try getting a new probe and to try repairing it. So at any rate, I've got this one and I slide it under here. I get 13,000 volts. My other meter shows about 11,000. It's supposed to be 14 according to the spec, so. And I, and I trust that it is about 14 because we're getting a nice bright picture, so I think this probe is more accurate than my other one. I use some Q-tips, some mineral spirits, and clean that off thoroughly, and then use the heat gun on low to make sure it was dried up thoroughly before powering it up again. And I'm happy to say, no more ozone. I've gone over everything I can think of in this set a couple times and it all looks pretty good, so I'm gonna move on. I was especially glad to see that we got about 4.7 volts here and they show a value of five. What that means is we have 100 milliamps flowing through this resistor. That's important because this is a horizontal output tube. If you have too much current flowing through this, you can burn it out. And that's why they give you a quarter amp fuse over here. I also found this interesting note in the riders. Removing vertical bars from picture. Shadow type vertical bars usually at the left side of the picture. Sound familiar? can be eliminated or minimized by adding a filter part number blah 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 to the horizontal output circuit now unfortunately they give no details on what that filter might consist of I've never seen one so <laughs> I don't know what this magical filter might be otherwise I would try adding it and see if it gets rid of those bars they do mention about some other things about dressing the leads away from the horizontal output tube and so on I tried that and that uh, really just didn't have any effect. So what I'm going to do is move on to cleaning up the cabinet, put this chassis back into it, and then start working on the console version of this set. I figure once I get that one restored, which uses essentially the same chassis, I can see how that one performs and if it performs better, then I can put the two side by side and see what differences there might be.